Well, we haven't had a chance to review the conditions in detail. I understand there are 209 of them, but we have five more. And those conditions, in many ways, trump the rest of them. We need to see that not only are there recommendations for safety, but that Enbridge, as a company, can show us evidence that they can actually meet those conditions and, in turn, meet our five conditions. That's the Environment Minister of BC. I've got good news for her. The first four of her five conditions have been met. Those were to finish the joint review panel, check, happened yesterday, to have world-beating marine and pipeline safety standards, yep, that's the 209 conditions, check, check, and have a whole Aboriginal consultation process. Yeah, that finished yesterday too, and one of the three panelists was Aboriginal. Check, 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 check. The last one is just how much of a tip, a gratuity, BC gets from the oil. Well, joining us now from Vancouver is a man who has had a lot of good news lately. That's John Carruthers, the president of Enbridge's Northern Gateway Pipeline. John, it's great to see you again. I feel like the, the political landscape has tilted in your favor. First in May, the anti-pipeline party was defeated at the ballot, and I think everyone admits it was over the pipeline issue and their no, no, no on jobs. And then yesterday, after an exhaustive review, the three-person panel said yes with 209 conditions. I think that things are moving in your direction. Am I too optimistic? No, I think I'd share a, a bit of that guarded optimism in terms of we've seen the federal government stepping up in terms of what it's committed to in terms of the tanker safety report, the AFERD report with respect to Aboriginal consultation, the agreement between Alberta and British Columbia, and of course yesterday the joint review panel recommendation. So I think we are seeing some progress, but clearly there's still a lot in front of us to be accomplished. Well, 209 things in particular. Yesterday we heard of a, a few of them, like a triple layer pipe and, and buoys around the ships. Give me a few examples of some of these conditions that you guys are going to have to meet in terms of safety in the environment to meet the, the rules set down yesterday. Yeah, as well, certainly I, I would characterize many of the conditions that, that are in are, are good engineering. In fact, so they're the next step we would do during detailed engineering. A, a, a number of them also reflected commitments we had made, as, as we heard from the people of British Columbia, all, in fact all across Canada, of what they were demanding to see to ensure there was a safe project. And some of those go, like you say, we committed uh, from a marine perspective to having two tugs escort loaded tankers. We committed to operational limits, like the tankers would go at reduced speeds and that they wouldn't go in terms of weather, there'd be weather restrictions in terms of uh, seas and fog. Uh, on the pipeline side, we committed to thicker pipe, we committed to more valves, we committed to dual leak detection. So all those things were incorporated as conditions for us moving forward, but certainly commitments that we had made. Uh, very high standard set. The, the conditions are tough, but, but uh, appropriately so. Uh, that's what BC is demanding, that's what Canadians demand, and in fact, that's what we demand of ourselves. Is there any pipeline in the entire world, in North America, in Europe, who knows, some other place, that is being made to these technical and environmental standards? Well, it's hard for me to know what's going on in the, in the entire world, but certainly with respect to North America, this is clearly state of the art. And of course, we brought uh, global experts in to help us design it because that was our focus, world class. So we got, brought people in from our, had experience around the world to help design and ensure we had a world class project. So it, it is very much state of the art. Uh, John, I want to ask you, I, I just showed on our show a bunch of foreign-funded lobbyists from Forced Ethics, uh, from Greenpeace, from the Dogwood Initiative, uh, for all these groups that take money from other countries to come into B.C. and say, stop, we're going to stop this at all costs. They've even threatened Clackwatt Sound-style violence. Now, to me, this is a good sign. It tells me that they're so frustrated with the will of British Columbians and with the rule of law that they're resorting to extreme and even eco-terrorist tactics. But what does that mean for you? I mean, I'm worried that you're going to see the ki same kind of crime spree against the Northern Gateway Pipeline that we've seen against the Line 9 Pipeline here in Ontario. Break-ins, vandalism, occupations. Are you guys ready for the violence that these eco-terrorists are threatening? Well, we certainly, our first priority in the, in the next few months is, is meeting with those in opposition to the project to try and continually address their concerns. I mean, they start with uh, very le legitimate concerns of wanting to ensure the pipelines built and operated safely. 
So we start there. I, I think the key though is making sure everybody has accurate information that they can trust. But that was a lot of what the joint review panel process had to bring up is making sure that there was accurate information, science-based, well-tested. So I think we can build from the joint review panel report in terms of trying to have a dialogue with those in opposition and say, okay, legitimate concern, how can we address it? And maybe make further changes if it's warranted. But clearly, I think that's a good platform to build from. John, you're a reasonable man operating in good faith. I'm afraid some of your opponents are paid hired guns that no matter what you do, they won't, uh, they won't uh, agree with this, but I wish you good luck. This is important, not just for BC, not just for jobs, not just for the Indian bands that will have a stake in this. This is important for our national sovereignty, our foreign trade, and frankly, our national self-respect. Can we build a national project without having foreign meddlers tell us no? I wish you good luck, and let's keep in touch in the months ahead, okay, John? Well, thank you very much. Thank you.